Hello, good people. So, if you're reading my tweets, you know that I went to The Beginning is Near with Cornell West and Michael Moore. <sighs> I think a wonderful evening, you know. For any of you that might know or might not know, I'm graduating tomorrow with my master's. And uh, my dad came, you know, which was really amazing. I haven't seen my dad in a long time. And he came to see me graduate. And, you know, tonight we went to this uh, this function. And it was hosted by the Brick Forum. And the Brick Forum is just this really awesome organization. Very leftist. I've been there um, to... I've actually spoken at the Brick Forum before uh, with WBAI Radio and with some veterans from the ANC and uh, that are living abroad. And, you know, so Brecht Forum, uh, at least I know something about it and I have a history there, which is great. And when they were hosting this event, I really couldn't miss it for two reasons. One, because it was being hosted by the Brecht Forum and the Brecht Forum puts together, like, the most awesome stuff. And the second reason, because of this guy right over here, Cornel West, an inspiring somebody. Um, this is the book that I bought today. I have another one of his. But this one I bought today because uh, it's one of the more popular ones and I don't have it. <laughs> and he signed mine. <laughs> but, um, you know, today they were just talking about what is what do they mean when they say the beginning is near. And um, when they opened, you know, I'm just I'm also only going to talk about Cornell West. I know some of you Michael Moore fans out there want me to talk about Michael Moore, but unfortunately you're going to have to tune into another channel. I support the brother, but... My job here is just to talk about Kona West. Um, so basically, you know, uh, they were talking about, you know, what what is the beginning and what is the end? What is it the end of? What is it the beginning of? And Kona West said, you know, basically it's the end of the Washington Consensus. It's the end of this Reagan era. Um, and it's the end of this era where we have weapons of mass destruction. And what he was talking about was, you know, how... We've been duped into believing that the capitalist system is anything but casinos. You know, all these insurance companies and the banks, all they're doing is gambling. I mean, uh, Cornell West put it as blatantly as saying, uh, you know, they treat everything that they do like they're in Las Vegas, which is what they do do. And considering where America is after the financial crisis and the threat of a new crisis coming, a looming, looming, um... You know, I thought that was really important that he that he pointed out. He was just talking, and he spoke a bit about, you know, how people have been tricked into believing things, and he referred to it as mass weapons of distraction, weapons of mass distraction. Um, and he said that young people lack three things, and I really agreed with him, and he said it's the dimensions of time. And what he was talking about there was he was saying that, you know, we miss the past, present, and the future. We miss an understanding of that. And I, and I think that for me as a young South African, that is so true in my life and, uh, you know, and in, in, in also in just in my experiences that, you know, as, as young people, especially in South Africa, we lack this past, present, and a future. And we've kind of forgotten where we come from and we've forgotten why it was that this freedom that we have today was fought for and what we were supposed to achieve. You know, I met some African-American people at this at the seminar today and, you know, one lady was just telling me um, that, you know, she was just so disappointed that in South Africa we've got this elite and the, it's just a niche group who are basically, they're just getting collaborated or brought into the capitalist system and they are really just a manifestation of the enemy we're fighting before. We can't still have deposits of labor where people don't have opportunities, where people can't develop, you know. So they were touching on a lot of these issues. And I think as South, as South Africans, considering the whole world really did stand behind us and fight for our liberation, and all we've done to show them is create a new hierarchy uh, with a few black people at the top and um, not not many of our, not not the majority benefiting from this new dispensation. I think we really have to start asking these questions of ourselves. Uh, Kona always said something that was really um, interesting when he was talking about, you know, old freedom fighters and people that really fought for the struggle, people that have been forgotten, people that are not that are not celebrated. He said their afterlife is at work in our lives, and he said that their afterlife has to be at work in our lives. So when you are living your life every day, you must really think about, you know. Is Steve Biko's legacy translated in the way that I live my life? 
And I think for me, it, you know, it isn't, guys. You know, I, I must admit, I definitely lost my way for a while. You know, I think getting confused by all the lights and craziness, you can forget, you know, your purpose in life and your responsibility as a human being to other humans around you. So uh, that is something that I really took, that Cornell always said to, today, that, you know, you know, Robert Sobuko's afterlife must be at work in my life. And people must be able to see it and, and see that his efforts were not in vain and that everything that he fought for is, 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 is happening in my life. A few, a few months ago, there was a guy who invited me to a, to a seminar, not to a seminar, to a museum opening. They were having a museum opening. And I thought this was great, you know. Young people must, you know, engage the arts and engage each other. But his flyer was the South African ID book but with Robert Subukwe's picture inside. So I sent to this guy an email and I said, I'm, I love what you're doing and your initiative, but, you know, you've got to remember that, um, you know, Robert Subukwe stood against this. I mean, this is, this is, this is why they went to burn pass, I, I pass. That's why they went and they burned passes because he didn't really agree with the fact that, you know, we, were, we had to have I pass to travel and move around our own country. And, you know, when this person put that picture in there, it was just, it just felt so disingenuous and so, you know, so gimmicky. And, I mean, I don't want to say it like that because I feel like we all have to help each other. We all have to educate each other. And sometimes we're going to make these mistakes. Sometimes I'll make mistakes. And people are like, no, me, I feel like you're a gimmick now, you know. And that's okay. Then you, you let me know and I can change my life. But, you know, I spoke to this guy and, and you know, the way that he responded to me, you know, it wasn't even like he wanted to read and he wanted to know more about Sobuke or... And I mean, that, that, that is a fault in my part, I'm sure, because it, I should have addressed it properly. But, I, I, you know, I thought I did when I said to him, you know, this is what Sobuke stood for and this is what he stood against. And the fact that you've got him in this particular depiction is a bit confusing and I can't align myself with that, you know. So, um... We need to ask these things of ourselves and really address uh, these issues. So the main thing today was that we're talking about capitalism. And one of the things that Cornell said that really, really stood out for me, I should say Dr. Winst. <laughs> yes, I'm just going Cornell, like I know him. Um, he said something, he was talking about how we have become a people who are subject to the highest bidder. We all have a price. And I think one of the, the lessons that I took from that is that you know, from today on, I am not subject to the highest bidder. You know, I, I've, I, I've tried not to be subject to the highest bidder. Um, I think that's why I still have an independent musical 